The Kitimiat Sea Science Study is a Department of Fisheries and Oceans Canada-led program uh, that tries to investigate uh, how the ocean um, and the ecosystem work in, in the Kitimiat region. It's a collaboration between uh, fisheries and oceans and academic institutions in Canada, uh, the U.S. and Norway, and also involves a lot of support from Polar Knowledge Canada and the Arctic Research Foundation. There's three main features to the system. The first is that it's, you can think of it as a marine basin uh, that has restricted exchanges with the ocean around it. And these restrictions come from two very shallow sills that are less than 30 meters deep um, in the north end uh, and in the west. And so that, first of all, uh, restricts how much ocean water comes into the marine system. And a key, uh, key thing to remember with this ocean water uh, is the water coming in um, from the outside uh, is bringing also the nutrients in that will support uh, the marine food web. So the first aspect um, are these shallow sills that restrict ocean water from coming into the system. The second is that uh, it's surrounded by uh, a drainage basin or a watershed that's over five times uh, the area of the marine system. And so that means there's a lot of fresh water uh, coming into the system. Um, and that fresh water combined with sea ice melt, um, because it's less dense than the salty ocean water, uh, tends to sit at the top of the ocean um, and restrict mixing. And so what that means is that the salty ocean water coming in that has lots of nutrients is sort of stuck in the bottom uh, or in the deeper waters and can't get into the sunlit surface where the plants can use it to grow. And so these features combine uh, to sort of contribute to the third aspect of the marine system where uh, the, there's not really enough nutrients to um, have a highly productive system. Uh, so there tends to be low productivity across the Katimian Sea. And that means that the ecosystem has top predators that are things like char uh, and seals instead of in other regions where you might have polar bears as the top predator. So what we are trying to understand in this region um, is how the ecosystem is set up to uh, have this low productivity, but also where are the regions or the locations within the ecosystem that could be sites where you could have enhanced primary production or enhanced plant growth that could support the ecosystems. When you're studying an ecosystem, there's a lot of parts. You have to consider, especially in an ocean system, on um, all the components that bring that ecosystem together. So we have people on our team that really focus on the mixing aspect, the currents, the physical system, how the ocean is mixing and what is creating the opportunity to bring nutrients to the surface. Uh, we have people on our team such as myself who look at the chemistry of the system, where do the nutrients come from, how do they get to the surface and, and what's using them and drying them down. And then we have people on our team who are looking at the ecosystem itself and sort of the products of that plant growth that's feeding into the organisms that live on the bottom of the ocean, um, and also uh, the fish and zooplankton that are living in the water column. From the very beginning, the Katimian Sea Science Study was premised on investigating information that came from community members in the north. So Dr. Bill Williams and Dr. Eddie Carmack, um, through discussions they had uh, with community members in Kaluktuk, uh, in Cambridge Bay and Joe Haven, elders were talking about these regions in the ice or these areas where the ice was, was thinner and that they couldn't travel over safely, um, even though it was winter and the ice pack was thick in a lot of other places. And so by identifying these regions that were not safe for ice travel, it also was identifying places where the current flow might be strong enough to be mixing deeper waters up to the surface. So the insights that came from community members really are what formed the basis of the study to go try to look at these high current areas as places where there might be enough mixing to bring nutrients to the surface. And then we've also continued to collaborate and to, to discuss our findings with the different knowledge holders in the communities to get more insights on the places that we should keep looking or the regions that are most important to them for better understanding how, how change in the marine system is impacting their community lives and, and livelihoods. This work is really important because even though we don't have a lot of baseline scientific data, uh, we do have uh, a good 10 or 15 years of data to start working from now. But even though we don't have that scientific 
observation timeline, uh, we do have uh, the timeline that's embedded in the observations of local knowledge holders. And so they are telling us that it's changing. Um, they're telling us that the timing of things that are important to their travel, their hunting, their harvesting from, from the land are changing uh, and that these changes are impacting their culture and their livelihoods and way of life. And so what we hope to do with more understanding in this region is try to help let communities know what we're observing and also try to give as much information as we can about how change might continue in the future. So what direction the changes in the ecosystem might go and also how that might impact their lives and livelihoods so that they can better uh, adapt and prepare for these changes.